point of it. She said that she didn't have time for this kind of foolishness. Her younger sisters are over there. Did you ask the Peterson boy? Yep. He just turned his back, didn't ask me, and walked off. you put on a dress and be a young lady for a while. Come on, enjoy it. Janie? Yes, Mother? The water jug's empty, dear. Good evening, Mrs. Cutler. Oh, good evening. Oh, I, I've gotten so heavy and awkward, I can do hardly anything for myself. <laughs> oh, the music sounds so gay. Yes, why don't you come on over and sit on the sideline? Oh, I, I better not. <laughs> Walking even that little distance is hard for me. <laughs> well, maybe you can talk Janie into coming over. Well, sure. You can go, honey. Uh, of course, the girls' beds have to be made. I, I suppose I could do it <laughs> if I move slowly. No, Miss Hale. I can't very well go in these jeans. You're the one who think it's disgraceful that I wear them at any time. 
Well, they'd be sure to think I was a complete hussy if I wanted to dance. Oh, yes, I have a dress. Somewhere at the bottom of one of our trunks. I don't know which. I think I've forgotten how to dance. It's been a long time. My hair needs washing. I don't have time for that. I don't think there's enough soap in this whole train to get my hands properly clean. You thought it was strange when I called myself the man of this family? Well, I haven't had time to be a girl, so what else am I? I love my sisters and my mother dearly, but I wish I wasn't with them. I could be just for one hour, all alone, by myself. No family. And maybe I could feel like being a girl again. Right now, I have more important things to do than to ten dances. Well, some other time, then. By the way, have you seen Dick Peterson tonight? No, I haven't, but when you find him, you tell him to keep away from us. Keep away? My sisters, they hang around him constantly. When he thinks I don't see him, he plays games with them. Grown man. I don't like it, Mr. Hill, and I wish you'd tell him. I'll talk to her. Where was that Peterson boy when you invited him? Well, he was taking the brewer horses out to the meadow to graze. Bill, have you ever seen him with the little Cutler girls? Yeah, I saw him playing a jump rope game with them once. A what? Well, he actually wasn't jumping a rope. He was swirling the other end for him. The youngest one, Dicky, she was doing the skipping. Anyway, when he saw me, he gathered up the rope and pretended like he was going to make a lasso and show him how to rope. So I saw it different. Pretty handy with that gun, Dick. I've been around. Oh, catch yourself a cold? Nope. And there's no call for you to pity me, Mr. Hale. Oh. Was I pitying you? You walk in on a man when he's not expecting you? You catch him doing most anything. Murder, maybe. Stealing. Or even worse. Now well, we got a nice hoedown going on over here. You've been invited to it. A lot of pretty girls who like to dance with you. What are you doing way out here in the wood? I can't dance. You know of a better reason? Can't you dance either? Or did you come here looking for me? Yes. A little of both. You know, Dick, all of us on this wagon train have been together ever since we left St. Joe. So naturally, we know quite a lot about each other. But we know practically nothing about you. Man of mystery, huh? You picked me up in the middle of nowhere with a bullet in me. You asked me how I got it. So I tell you, it's a couple of months ago now, and I forget how. How I got attacked by Indians and left for dead? Was that the story I told you? That was the story. Anything wrong with it? Is it true? The brewers asked me to drive for them, and I'm doing it. And they're satisfied. 
One of these days we'll reach a town I'll cut into and I'll cut out. That's all you have to know. You got no claim on me. You just let me keep my secret, Mr. Hale. And maybe my only secret is I, I haven't got one. Mm -hmm. Well, come on over and join us. I don't belong. What does that mean? It means what it says. I don't belong. They're families, most of them. They got each other. I'm a Johnny come lately. They try to mix, they'll think I'm horning in. Who needs them? I like being alone. So you won't be bothered when you come here to be sorry for yourself? You're giving a dance, Mr. Hale, but you're neglecting your guests. You're probably asking right now where you are. So why don't you go back to them and leave me be? I do hope this one's a boy. For your father's sake. He did so want one. Every time one of you was due, he, he just prayed it would be a son. A boy makes a man feel immortal, kind of. It carries on his name. You girls will all get married, and then you'll be Joneses or Smiths or whatever. But a son... As far as you worrying about the cutler name being lost, there'd be one of us to carry it on. Me. Well, how could you possibly? We... You mean you'll never get married? Oh, of course you will. One day, some nice boy will see how pretty you really are. And then the first thing you know, you'll be... Mother, do we have any salt left? Salt? Well, I, I, I don't know. Oh, uh, what do you need it for, dear? Well, I want to fix a salt gargle for Vicky. She's got a very sore throat. Oh. I hope we don't have to borrow again from Mr. Rooster. Oh, I don't think he minds. <laughs> He's nice. Most men are nice. That's why it's so silly of you to talk about being an old maid. Well, we have enough for Vicky anyway. A woman without a man is only half a human being. I know. All right, Mother, I'll... I'll marry the first man I meet. Old man Callahan. <laughs> He's already married, besides he's almost 70. Well, then, maybe I'll marry that, that sneaky Peterson boy. Anyone so that I'm not half a human being. I don't know if that boy is sneaky or he's just kind of lonely. The girls all adore him, all of them. Yeah, why does he hang around kids that are so much younger than he is? Well, I, I don't know. No one else on the train seems to pay much attention to him. Well, Rainey is 16. She's a young woman. And Ruthie's over 14. You mean he's in love with one of them? And, and this is his way of courting her? Oh, well, Vicky's his favorite, and she's only six. Where are you going? Get him. It's way past their bedtime. Looking for the girls? They went off with Dick Peterson. Well, I don't know. They all seem sort of secret about it. Once we get through that windy stretch of canyon, we'll have pretty easy going. Desert like, but flat. Mr. Hale, I can't find my sisters. Rebecca Burr said that they went off with that Peterson boy somewhere away from camp. 
Now, I don't know where they've gone, and I'm worried. Thank you, ladies. May I look forward to the pleasure of the next dance? Lost, nah, sir. Shouldn't we give the other gentlemen a chance? So far, you monopolized every measure we have trod. Monopolized? She's trying to say monopolize. She's always using big words. Only she can't pronounce them. And half the time, she doesn't even know what they mean. I do, too. I was telling Sir Dickie that he's been hogging every dance. While the other noble courtiers await longingly. What's she talking about? Who's waiting? Sir Wooster. Sir Bill Hawks. Sir Mr. Hale. I've been forgetting myself, ladies. I must give the others a chance. Sir Wooster, take your choice of these lovely damsels. Why, thank you. Thank you. How about a miss? Shake a leg with no buzzer like me? I love you, Dickie. And I love all of you, too. Whenever we're having fun, she's got to spoil everything. Since Papa died, she's so darn bossy. Uh, dance is over. It's later than I thought. You kids better get back to the wagon. Oh. Come on, I'll go part of the way with you. Wait a minute, you. Where do you think you're running off to? To my wagon. I'm not running. Well, what were you doing with my sisters? Taking them back to your wagon. Why do you keep playing their games as if you were a child yourself? You leave them alone. You're much too old for them. He ain't too old for us. He's our friend, and we like him to play games with us. He don't pester us. He told us he loved us. Oh, he... He did, did he? This is ridiculous. A man your age, he doesn't tell little girls he loves them. And from now on, you're to keep away. Now, where were you girls just now? We went off by ourselves and had our own dance. Why? Why are you always sneaking off with them? A grown man, he doesn't play hopscotch and skip the rope with young girls. You small-minded little slob. If you were really a man, and instead of just acting and dressing like it, I think I'd kill you. But you're a girl, so they tell me, who wears pants and keeps her hands and face dirty to match her thoughts. <laughs> to him like that. He's the best friend we ever had. You slapped him for no reason. I wish someone would tell me what happened. He's just about the nicest person in the whole world. Well, take this. Don't swallow it. Just gargle. No, I won't. You have a very bad throat, and if you don't gargle with salt water, you'll be sick. I hope I am. Uh, uh, Vicky. She said we mustn't see him again. I want to see him again. I wish someone would tell me what oh, happened. Oh, I asked him where he'd gone with the girls, and he was very rude. He called me a slob. You started it. 
You got a mad. Take a good look at yourself, sister dear. Aren't you a slob? All right, all of you, get in bed. Now, you take this. No, I won't. I hope I die. Bed. Even a train. I was looking for one to maybe steal. But now you caught me, I suppose I'll have to buy instead. Well, buy or steal. Giacomo here'd be your best bet if you're in a hurry. I'd want about $25 for him if you bought. Of course, if you stole him, there wouldn't be any cost until we caught up with you. Then you know the price you'd have to pay. You, uh, leaving the train because of what Janie said to you? You know, you two aren't exactly a mutual admiration society. You're not even good judges of character because you're both wrong. And you don't believe that? Why don't you look at it from her point of view? Now, here she is with all those chores and all those kids to look after. Then one day, a good-looking young fella comes on the train under very mysterious circumstances. He doesn't pay any attention to her. Just stays by himself. Kind of mopish and unfriendly with everybody except her five little sisters. Pretty soon they won't pay any attention to her. Just want to go play games with him. And he goes off into the woods, dances with them when there's a public dance going on. Now... Wouldn't you be a little concerned if you were her? No. I'd try to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'd try to understand that he was lonely, shy, doesn't feel at home with folks near his own age, all alone in the world, too, I'd say, and unwanted by everybody except five little girls who love him just as he is and don't ask any questions. You seem to know quite a lot about me. Well, your actions the past few days, Dick, have told me quite a lot. It takes all kinds to make up the world or a wagon train. She'd like to leave her family, and you'd give anything to have one. If you could change places for a while, you'd stop hating each other. Well, Mrs. Brewer needs you to help her drive, so you better hang around, Dick. I'm leaving. Well, I don't quite know how you're going to make out. You have money enough to buy a horse. You're not likely to get enough with the wages Mrs. Brewer pays you. And if you stole one, I'd have to get up a posse. When we found you, we'd have to decorate a tree with you. So your choice is kind of limited. Night, Dick. Get me. 
it is. I think they've all got a touch of fever. Well, yeah. Don't let him out of bed. And not better about him not, I'll, I'll ask Mr. Hill for some medicine. They're waving to you. They want to say hello. I see him. He's mad. The way our biggity sister talked to him, you can't blame her. Would you like a drink of water, dear? It hurts when I swallow. Take a little sip. It'll cool you off. Could I have a cup of water? Sure. You better get to bed. Well, go on. You're not well. Now, do as you're told and get to bed at once. That's what's the matter. We have to do everything you tell us to do. Go to bed. Get up. Eat your supper. Don't eat so fast. Don't eat so slow. Don't talk to Dickie Peterson, who is our best friend in the whole world, till you spoil it. Now he won't even talk to us. We hate you. Now, there ain't no point in you folks hanging around here. Mr. Chris has taken care of everything. Folks say they're sick. Folks say it's the plague. Yeah, if something isn't done, we can get it too. You folks are getting excited all over nothing. Janie's feeling just fine, and so is Mrs. Cutler. Chris, won't you, Charlie? Yeah. Hard to swallow, huh? Yes, sir. Open your mouth. Say ah. Ah. Again. Ah. Uh, white spots are there. He's getting it. Are you sure that's what it is? The diphtheria, all right. Charlie, you ever had diphtheria? I don't know, Mr. Chris. My mother never told me, but I don't think so. That means you have no immunity, neither a Bill or Duke. I'm going to isolate this wagon, put it about a half a mile back at the end of the train so there's no epidemic. Somebody will have to drive it. Well, I can manage. I told you that, Mr. Hill. Five sick little girls to look after? That'll take some doing. Well, I can do it. They'll let me. We can put Mrs. Cutler in the spare wagon. You can drive that. Me, Mr. Chris? She's in a delicate condition, you know. Well, there's nothing to worry about. The last I heard, it wasn't catching. We'll uh, hitch up your team. Now, there's no use keeping you people in ignorance about what's happening. It's diphtheria. What? But it won't spread. I'm putting this wagon far enough behind the rest of the train so that the rest of you won't be exposed. Now, get on back to your wagons and quit worrying. Chris. Well, suppose it's a stormy night and I'm driving her and the baby starts coming and I'm all alone. Then what happens? You'll be the first midwife with whiskers in all of medical history. She'll have a hard time, poor girl. All the little ones are down with diphtheria. I heard.
you feel it? Miss Cuddler, is everything out of control back there? Just fine. It's not waking me up every five minutes. I'm sorry, ma'am. You go back to your nap now. Take it easy now. Mrs. Cutler, I'm sorry I didn't see that rut. I hope I didn't shake you up too much. It almost threw me out of bed. Don't you get yourself agitated now, Mrs. Cutler. You just hold everything. Oh, how did I get in this? Hot, is it? Have you heard how Janie and the little girls are getting along? No, ma'am. This will make you feel better. I don't want to feel better. Now, of course you do. Now, please, Vicky, keep this on your forehead. If you don't do as you're told, you never get well. I don't want to get well. Lizzie, that is a completely stupid thing to say. Well, you ought to know about saying stupid things. We learned how to say them from you. You're our big sister. All right. You won't let me do anything for you. I know... I know you don't like me since that... But I'm the only one who can take care of you. Now listen, all of you, you're very sick. And even if you do hate me, you can't hate yourselves. It was for your sakes. It wasn't good for you to see so much of that boy and in secret. Why was he always playing your games? Because he loves us. And you don't. Janie? Janie Cutler? The team has wandered off the trail. You go inside, you better stop the wagon. I was afraid of getting too far behind. Well, you couldn't get too far, but what we could find you. How's everything going? There's no change. How's Mother? Oh, she's bearing up real well, everything considered. Worcester's got me a little worried, though. The other day, he had a sudden craving for watermelon. <laughs> Kids behaving all right? A little beast. They won't let me help them. They, they say that I, uh, I don't love them. They keep telling me they hate me. Well, they won't take their medicine, water, food. They're gonna die. Want me to ask young Peterson to help you? No. Oh. If you think I'm gonna let my stubborn little sisters and that hateful boy lord it over me. What are you gonna do then? Manage somehow. Mr. Hale? Mrs. Brewer's got something to ask you. see me? Me? Why, no. Well, Dick said you wanted to ask me something. Uh, you wanted to know about the sick kids, you said. Oh, oh, of course. How are they? Well, they're uh, pretty bad, Rebecca. They're not only very sick, but they're mad that Janie won't do as she tells them. There isn't much you can do for diphtheria, but they won't even let her do that a little. Mad at her? Well, for goodness sake, why? Oh, they have some fool notion in their head that their big sister's their enemy, who's taken their best friend away from them. She asked for me? No. She say anything about wanting me there? No. Then what am I supposed to do? 
crawl out of my stomach and beg to help? You did ask her if she wanted me around, didn't you? I told her I could ask you to help her. Yeah, she said, don't bother. I'm still poisoned, huh? Still not to be trusted. And if anything happens to those kids, she's to blame, isn't she? Not me. I wouldn't know how to figure that. Maybe it's the kids' fault. Maybe if they die, it serves them right for giving their love to someone who won't help them because their sister hurt his feelings. <laughs> Mr. Hale? Oh, sure. Miss Brewer says she can drive till I get back. Anything you want me to tell Janie? I don't know. Yes. Tell her I think you're a great guy. Be a little hard convincing her of that. I've had some experience with diphtheria. Oh, did you have it? No, but a lot of the other kids came down with it. Your family, huh? in the orphanage where I was brought up. I watched the doc treating them, so if she'll let me. She'll have to. If she won't, you take over and send her back here. man, mister. What's he wanted for? Thank <laughs> you. 
God. I went for help. I, I think I've caught it. I can't see you. Who are you? I'm the grown man who plays kid games with your sisters. Still with the train? Yeah, well, he's still hanging around. They searched the train pretty thoroughly yesterday. Couldn't find you, of course, but he and the law have a pretty good idea that you're still around. Peterson tells me he thought he killed you when you two had a shootout. But later, when he came back to bury you, Decent of him. Uh, and he also wanted your gun, which he claims you stole from him. Anyway, when he didn't find your body, he decided he'd only wounded you. Then he ran into a family of Paiutes. Remember those Indians came to the train begging for food some time ago? He had three little ones, one of Papoos. Nice kids. And you gave them most of your supper. Well, you shouldn't have done that because that made their parents remember you. When he described you to them, they said you were on this train. And he wanted to know why this wagon was so far behind the rest of them. Is he coming here? Well, he didn't seem too anxious when I told him it was a plague wagon. And he wanted to know if anybody died. Could be one of them will. The little one? No. Jane. If anything, have you done for her? I'm not letting her die, if that's what you're hinting. Giving her cold compresses? Trying to get her to eat something. She don't want help from me. Well, that hard breathing, were the, were the other kids as bad as that? No. I think her windpipe's closing up. One of the kids in the orphanage had the same thing. Doc had to cut his throat open and stick a tube in. Otherwise, he would have choked to death. A tracheotomy, I think they call that. Well, if she gets worse, would you know how to... No, and I wouldn't do it even if I did. Because if it didn't work, you'd all say I deliberately killed her. Well, the next town, the nearest I can figure, is about four or five hours right away. I'm going to send Duke in there and see if he can find a doctor. What are you going to tell Peterson? Those kids need you a lot more than the law does. By the way, what is your name? I don't know. Guess I was taken to the orphanage when I was pretty young. 
Last names were like candy in that place. Most of us never got either one. So I borrowed Peterson's name when he bought me. Bought you? Twenty-five silver dollars. Cheap for a slave. Though I fetched ten dollars more than they got for most of the other boy kids. I was pretty husky at fourteen. Oh, it wasn't called slavery. Brown boy, indentured apprentice. Though you couldn't tell the difference with the naked eye. I'm not going back, Mr. Hale. I'll kill or die first. You take care of him, Dick. I hope I can get a doctor here by morning. I got some gruel cooking. Have it for you in a minute. We love you anyway, Dickie. What do you mean, anyway? You're cooking. But don't feel hurt. We'll eat it because we know you mean well. <laughs> well, if you're that hungry, you're practically cured. Telling the doctor. I don't know what to do for her. Please come in for a minute, please. <laughs> Can't you do something, Dickie? I did do something. I hitched up the wagon so as I can get her to a doctor. Do you know where the next town is? No, I don't. Well, then how are you? I don't know, but it's better than waiting here till Hale gets here with the doctor. She may not last till morning. giving her his own breath. He's never had it. He can catch it from her. He's very noble. <laughs> in my stomach here all day long. Well, sympathetic pain, Charlie. Shows you're a kind, understanding character. Are you sure? Well, I've been worried all day. I thought I was starting something I couldn't finish, you know. Well, you stay here. I'll get to it. Yeah, we will do. He went into town to see if he can find a doctor for the kids. Hope he can make it a night like this. 
Well, I think somebody ought to sit here with me. You shot it out with him. He'd run away a dozen times before. I told him then when I caught up with him, he'd come peaceful or else. And if you catch up with him this time? Same terms. Didn't you get your $25 worth of work out of him since he was 14? Just how much... How'd you know when I got him? How much I paid for his indenture? I'm a mind reader. kids on it. It can't be any place else. Resuscitation, young man. Well, one of the boys in the uh, where I was brought up, he fell in a creek and he couldn't swim. By the time we fished him out, he was pretty bad. He's a good friend of mine, and there's nothing else to do, so I tried it on him. Didn't work. He died. Well, it certainly worked spectacularly well on this young woman. You showed great initiative and presence of mind. And you know you owe him your life, don't you? On the ordinary course of events, you'd reward him by marrying him. But speaking from personal experience, I'd say that a greater reward would be not to marry him. Well, let's give her a week's rest and she'll be as good as new. And someone here owes me two dollars and a night's sleep. Thank you. That's all right. <laughs> you kids get back in bed. You're not well yet. that you work out of, Sheriff? Cranston. At Nebraska? Yeah. Well, I think you can go on home now. You just run out of authority. This is no longer Nebraska. This is territory. You can take your friend with you. No, you just wait a minute. No, you just wait a minute. You put one hand on that boy and I'll have you up for false arrest. You've had a big chunk out of his life. You've worked him until he couldn't take it anymore. Now you're going to leave him alone. $25 he cost you. Lying for depreciation, a little wear and tear. He's seven years older now. There's 20. And you'll have to make that do. Is that the law here about? Come to think of it, I guess it is. <laughs> Do 
You've been driving with Mrs. Brewer for two months? Yeah. $10 a month? Have you collected any of it yet? That's $20. You owe it to me. Both of them doing real fine, too. You know, we expected a boy, you know, but we just took what the good Lord gave us. Too late. You know how it is. George, you get one? I'll take two. I like you. Chick, you get one? You're acting like you're his father. Well, I'm much godfather. That's almost as good, isn't it? And it doesn't cost as much. Now, wait a minute. I tried to get bonbons for all you girls, but I couldn't find them anyplace. Look on every rock. Have you seen Dickie? Since he's been driving for you folks, we don't get to see much of him. Well, Mama wants him. Little Lucy's got the colic, she thinks. But she wants him to look at her. Honest, since he helped Janie, you think he was a big doctor or something. Lucy, that's the new one, isn't it? Yeah, she yells all the time. Only Dickie can make her stop. You know, since we got over being sick, Things have changed an awful lot, and not for the better, either. Wouldn't you know? Much more fun when she was a slob. <laughs> <laughs> 